everyone. Today, let's discuss Kelly Hamilton theorem. First, let us define this. Whenever you have a polynomial fx equal to a0 plus a1x plus so on till a and x n with coefficients a i is from field f and if t is a linear operator on a vector space v over f then f of that operator t is a0 i plus a1 t plus so on till a n t to the power n. Similarly, if A is any n cross n matrix with entries from field F, then F of A is A naught i plus A1 A, so on till A n A to the power n. Now, the Kelly Hamilton theorem says that let T be a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space V and let Ft be the characteristic polynomial of T. Then, Ft is equal to T naught, the zero transformation which brings every vector to 0, that is, T satisfies its characteristic equation. To show that f of T is the 0 transformation, we want to show that f of T applied to every vector V in vector space V is 0. Now, if the vector V is itself 0, then f of T being linear will take 0 to 0. So, let us assume this V is non-zero. Let W be the cyclic subspace generated by V and suppose that dimension of W is K. Then the theorem which we have discussed in the previous video, we get that there exist some scalars such that A0 V plus A1 T applied to V so on till a k minus 1 t to the power k minus 1 applied to v plus t to the power k applied to v is 0. Hence, using the same theorem, we get the characteristic polynomial t restricted to w was g t is equal to minus 1 to the power k a naught plus a 1 t so on plus a k minus 1 to t to the power k minus 1 plus t to the power k. This is the characteristic polynomial of t restricted to w. Combining these two equations, we get g of operator t applied to v will be this equation minus 1 to the power k into a naught identity map plus a 1 t so on till a k minus 1 t to the power k minus 1 plus t to the power k applied to v. Again, we have discussed this that the characteristic polynomial of the restricted map will divide the characteristic polynomial of the linear operator T. So, G of T divides F of T. Hence, there exists some polynomial QT such that F of T is equal to QT into GT. So, F of T applied to V is Q of T into G of T applied to V which is equal to Q of T into G of T applied to V which is equal to q of t of 0 since g of t applied to v is 0 using the equation first equation given here so this is equal to 0 hence f of t is the 0 transformation let us have a look at this example if t is a linear operator on r, r square defined by this equation t of a b is a plus 2 b and comma minus 2 a plus b when beta be the standard basis so beta is equal to e1 e2 we construct the matrix corresponding to this beta, we get A is equal to 1, 2, minus 2, 1. Now, the characteristic polynomial of T is determinant of A minus T i, which will be T square minus 2 T plus 5. Now, we will see that F of the operator T, which is T square minus 2 T plus 5 i, this is 0. So, we have to apply this to every element of R square. I have marked in star, I am applying it to the basis element. So, we will check if it is 0 at the basis element, it will give value 0 at any vector V in R square. So, T square minus 2T plus 5I applied to E1 will give you 0. Similarly, you can calculate this T square minus 2T plus 5I applied to E2, this will again give you 0. So, this f of t is actually the 0 linear transformation. Similarly, f of a is a square minus 2a plus 5i. You can calculate these values for a and see that this f of a will again be 0. 
now we see the kelly hamilton theorem for matrices let a be any n cross n matrix and let ft be the characteristic polynomial of a then f of a is zero which is the zero matrix now we apply the theorem to the linear transformation la so we know that the characteristic polynomial of la is same as that of a which is say ft now and now we get the result using the previous result f of la is t on the zero transformation so f of a applied to v is equal to f of la applied to v f of la is zero so we get that f of la is zero so we get that f of a is equal to zero this completes the proof thank you for watching this video